Sa totoo lang hindi ko alam na magiging dikit yung laban kasi nung una, parang sobrang laki na lamang namin eh. Siguro sa mga yung miscom namin, tsaka mga maling place, kaya naging dikit yung laban. Pero buti na lang, nanalo pa rin kami. Sa laban namin sa AEX, uh, nakapag-practice naman kami ng isang buong linggo. So sigurado, ano, mas confident ako na mas malinis yung place namin. Abangan nyo yung laban namin mamaya. And welcome back, viewers, to the Bacchus Pro Gaming Series 2017 Summer Split. We will be your shoutcasters. I am Vulcan, and joining with me is Arctic. Yes, indeed. Very interesting games that we had today. Very, very explosive. I mean, we're just into week two, but all the matches that we've been seeing thus far, very, very close. Again, like, my prediction of what the order would be as far as who would be emerging on top, predictions completely out the window, man. But yeah, of course. Very interesting, as this will actually be our last match for today. Third match, last game, game six. So, yeah, I mean, IPT AEX, again, the rivalry is right here in front of us. And since this is the uh, last game of day one of the second week, this is your last chance to win yourself a mystery gift because we are still on our share and win promo. So here are the mechanics. First off, you need a Facebook profile page. Everyone has that. And second, you need to watch out for the code that's going to pop up in the uh, stream. That is the hashtag code. You have to use that when sharing the gaming.youtube.com, the phkarena slash live stream link. Not the Facebook link. It has to be the, game, the YouTube gaming link that we are live streaming right now with the hashtag code. And you will get your chance to win yourself a mystery gift five winners this time so get yourself a mystery gift yeah get yourself a oh, and then fingers crossed that you don't get the 60 rp skins <laughs> we had soraka maybe chosen master Yi. no just kidding hopefully but not. that's the uh, fun part of the mystery gift you don't yeah. know what you're getting i mean when you have a lot of uh, rp it's kind of boring when you buy the exact skin yeah you want. exactly so it's very exciting for a mystery gift but now guys the last game of today's match AX versus IPT. AX in the first game. Oh, wow, I gotta say, the smallest mistake that IPT showed to AX, they did so well. Yeah. AX got the double kill from Tamsu, same as that, the uh, first blood turret, and after that, the Mountain Drake. That was enough to really put AX on track. And you know what I really like about I gotta give my kudos to Mirmo. Great debut in the pro gaming series. Um, if, for some of you that might watch my stream, I actually talk about her. Mirmo is one of those undiscovered talents prior in splits prior because he's so strong. He actually ADC'd for Asian Arena before. He, um, he was initially the AD carry along with uh, his former support, Beast Boy. So he was actually, when we went up against them, he was like, when we think ACA, like Mirmo was one of the players we feared the most because like him alone could carry an entire team. So it's very refreshing to see that finally a team, a great team like AX, actually recognized that talent mm. and picked them up. So we just got to show from game one though. I mean, yeah. Kudos to Mermud. His debut has been made. Let's hope that he keep it up. So guys, I know you're excited. This is the rivalry that we are always uh, emphasizing because it's such a classic matchup. IBT versus AEX. But I know you're excited, but still, who do you think is going to win? Put your comments in the uh, ch uh, ch live chat and on your Facebook profile because still, we want to emphasize that. We want you guys to also win your sub mystery gifts. So always share is that gaming.youtube.com link publicly on your timeline. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And yeah, I mean, what's interesting here is that if you're, you're going to look at both Imperium Pro team and Acclaim Empire X, both teams actually have shaken up their roster in a way. I feel like AX actually is one of the heaviest, heavier roster changes. Losing Calculated, losing Endless Ace, swapping in for completely fresh talent such as Awaken, such as um, like Mirmo as well. And so far, it's definitely, it's interestingly been working for them. And then for IPT as well, they have this shakeup between their sister team TME. So we have Shadow and Suzaku now on the roster so again i feel like even though we have this rivalry going on there's also that question at the back of my mind which team actually managed to pull off a better change after the last year since this rivalry actually emerged which was during rampage 2016 and going into rampage 2017 i wonder which team will be facing off each other you know well i've been following the pgs scene for quite some time and i noticed the titans of the pgs is of course you know the titans 
IBJ and Mineski, one of the constant uh, top two players, or who are always the team to make to the playoffs. Also for AEX, who just recently joined in. Yes. Sometimes I see a pattern where the new teams who come into the BGS team, they have such fresh talents. So we sometimes see them faring well against these big veteran teams. And like uh, Asian Arena, they managed to get a victory onto Mineski, whereas mm -hmm. this time AEX, with new roster changes, are also doing fairly well against IPT, but I wonder what's happening to the roster changes for IPT Purple Team side. We are seeing Suzaku on the top lane here. What's your opinion on this? Well, I really love Suzaku. I mean, what I really like about him is clearly a talent. I've actually interviewed some people on my stream who they think the best player is. Like, one question I always ask when I do interviews on my stream is, with pro players particularly, is which one player in the Philippines, regardless of role, do you think qualifies as potential international talent like we could confidently send him abroad and he'd do just fine like if you incorporate him on the team in any eu china and the frequent answer like for the most of the percentage it's usually suzaku that's mentioned now the interesting thing here is that because sometimes like even though you have the best players um it doesn't necessarily always translate to like great team synergy. I mean, probably at first, but you could build up on it eventually. But you know, there's that learning curve in a way wherein you have all these ti titanic personalities, titanic gameplay, game players. But you know, sometimes like when you have such big players, because everybody is so strong, like you kind of want to, like it's everybody figuring out their footing in a way. Mm, it's like mark where you're good at and set up a foundation on that. Yes, indeed, and. Actually, we've had a PG. I'm not going to mention which, but there's this one team actually that did the same, wherein they had a lot of great names, but it didn't translate into them meshing together. If anything, like, again, this is always what I say. It's not about just the mechanics. You have to consider the player mindset as well. And that's exactly what happened. Like, this team, they had such well known players, such great names in the scene, but when they came together, it just fell up, ultimately fell apart for them. So, so it's like you may have all the expensive ingredients in cooking, but when you mash them together, they don't always taste good, mm. in a way. Exactly. So, so to, to our viewers out there, note that we are live on gaming.youtube.com slash phgarena slash live. And also for the share in mechanics, you have to share that link on your Facebook profile publicly. So what are you waiting for? Share the fun with your friends and join in the last game of today's match. It's going to be explosive. I guarantee it because this is IPT we're talking about. Oh, the yes. big name, the veteran of the PGN. I remember back in my day when I was just starting out in esports, like one of my favorite players was Light. Yeah. So there was this little meetup back then. Like I had a like sobrang like fanboy mode. Like a picture pa ako. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, anyways, going into the pick and Well, I can't right blame now. you. He is one of the best mid laners. Indeed. And like one of the, like for the longest time, like probably like facial in terms of, I mean, really cool hairstyle man <laughs> <laughs> i gotta say but yeah going into the kid band right now uh ban so he is very guapo is that the word guapo? yeah there you go like we have a lot of great looking players in the pgs mm. <laughs> <laughs> they're like mm. <laughs> anyway so okay, let's go ahead and check out the band so i really like the respect ban for vanguard here they're actually banning out the rakan mm. so that's something you don't normally see actually unless you're in solo queue when you don't so want to go up against the champion. But yeah, I Vanguard think, actually is good. Yeah, I think on uh, Pick on Desire, just going to show that they're on cool off for now. Mm -hmm. So, seeing how IPT is prioritizing this time as Zaya and oh, a guy with a ranker for your side for the first picking phase. Whereas AEX, they're picking up the Gragas and the Lulu that uh, we did see IPT run that in the first game. Let's see how it'll turn out in the last game. Mm, indeed. And yeah, I mean, what's interesting here is, uh, of course, take note, guys, again, AX still will be using Mirmo for this game as opposed to Gen V. So, I mean, why fix something that isn't technically broken? And Mirmo, you know, what's interesting is that a lot of people, a lot of, during that previous game, they were really converging onto Mirmo that, like, everybody else was kind of forgotten. So, like, by the time Mirmo was down, everybody else on AX just swooped into <laughs> the members of IBT. But yeah, hopefully this will not... Well, you know, we'll see. IPT is known for, again, they're one of the best teams for a reason. So I wouldn't be surprised if they really step up their game in the second match. I mean, second uh, game for this matchup. So I got to see, man. Mermo hovering on that Caitlyn. Ooh. Paired up with a Lulu. That works pretty well. But 
Let's see. Glit on a Rengar this time, and now we're going to be seeing a uh, hover on the cannon. Ooh. And so it will be a uh, mid lane Galio and a top lane cannon, perhaps? Let's see. Yes, yeah, so we'll just have to see if IPT will see the same success as um, a Asian Arena, actually. Asian Arena actually did run mid Galio for Echo. But is it wise? Putting a light on a utility mid laner. We know that like tends to snowball a lot. When he does, he will carry the game. But what's your take on this? I mean, I feel like one of the best players, Faker included. One of the reasons why Faker is so good, like he knows how to adapt to what role he needs. Like if he needs to go utility, mm. like because sometimes you have to make those sacrifices when you always can't be in the spotlight. And I feel like that's what makes a great player if you're able to adapt to what the team needs as far as strategy and like live up to that role and play that like versatility at the end of the day and playing to like still playing well despite whatever champion is thrown at you yes and that's what you expect from a seasoned veteran player like light mm. so, so yeah. right now the final rundown for both teams looking pretty solid as i said it would be the double teleport Canon and Galia, we've seen this before let's see if ipt can do it better this time and not to mention, show it how it is done. But AEX, Cannon running that Fiora against a Cannon. He does have the mobility, but cannot underestimate that Fiora. I mean, once the Grand Challenge is on you, that's that slow from the E is so painful. I love how AEX actually went for the Lucian mid, especially against the Galio, because this actually solves a few of the complications when you're actually going up against a Galio in that mid lane. So. Yeah, again, AEX clearly showing that um, they're one of, not, I wouldn't say creative, but bec because a lot of us peg AEX as a cheese pick team, but I don't think it's necessarily cheese. I think it's just them thinking very smart. Like, they know how to, when to use which champion for a certain strategy or for a certain counter, maybe. So, yeah, I mean, this is, at the end of the day, it's wherein the meta doesn't really matter. It's all about... Um, I mean, the meta matters, of course. Champions are in the meta for the reason, but of course, you have to be creative with. You have to be creative sometimes to counter that. Well, I like the bot lane duo of IPT. Karma, in my opinion, is a better support for a Zaya because Zaya needs that positioning and also that quick burst of shield and the speed boost is very helpful to position and stack those feathers up pretty nicely. But for uh, Mermo, I think for the bot lane of AEX, is it a good matchup, Arthur? Wow, I mean, for this bot lane, it's definitely interesting because that is a Caitlyn up against a Saya. So, um, the n what the normal problems that you'd norm you you have when you're up against a Saya, if you're any other AD carry, is clearly like you're gonna get get eat feathers all day. But because you are the Caitlyn, you can't go up to R because of the long range that you have. So, again, it's a very in a way, it's a very safe bot lane for Mirmo and Vanguard. But they do have all the makings of one potentially going aggressive as well, especially if Tamsu does decide to rotate towards bot lane. Man, I really love this split so far. The summer split of the Bacchus Pro Gaming Series, we're seeing such fresh talents. And not to mention, Worlds on the line right now. One slot mm. for GPL, two for Worlds. You have to expect that all these top eight teams, the country's best, will perform to their fullest potential and show them what they've got to represent the Philippines. Indeed, you know, and, I mean, and potentially see. <laughs> yeah, potentially see. I mean, it's a, it's a, it would be a huge honor in itself. Of course, we are looking for nothing but the best. Nothing but the best, smallest mistakes. There are no room for this. This is the best top eight teams in the Philippines. Yes, indeed. And of course, one of those teams will have to prove themselves come Rampage 2017. If to you know to prove themselves worthy of carrying our flag and like going whoosh 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 at, <laughs> at the GPL and potentially maybe just maybe worlds. Mm -hmm. So I think this is going to be a really fiery matchup. I mean IPT did lose the first game, but I gotta say that I don't think they're gonna take this as a setback. This is something that they will drive them forward, and for AEX is also they will strike back strong. But before that, let's get to the rear.
And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Last game for week two, day one of the Garena Pro Gaming Series, of course, powered by Bacchus Drive Your Energy, IPT versus AEX in the house. Whoever you guys are rooting for, make sure to let us know in our chat on YouTube. And now that we are still... <laughs> that's a nice intro. But of course, we are live on gaming.youtube.com slash phgarena slash live. Yes, there you go. So head on, head on right away to catch this. As this is a very juicy matchup indeed. Like I mentioned, the rivalry is rekindled, continued from Rampage 2016. Of course, who will emerge victorious? Will it be our All Hail IPT? Or will it be our the pride of Iloilo, Acclaim Empire X? Featuring... Peeps from Manila, <laughs> in form of Mirmo and Vanguard. <laughs> so yeah, we do we do see a pattern right now in the uh, PGS where uh, AEX does have this a uh, slow start. Mm. When coming to week two and week three, you're gonna expect they will be propelling themselves to be in the top four, Minions going up to the playoffs. Yes, indeed. And yeah, I'm actually surprised because. At the start, I was kind of worried for AX because these are big changes. When you're changing out your mid laner and to an extent when you're using a new AD carry, like these are very crucial roles. In fact, they're called AP carry and AD carry for a reason. Here comes the face check. Oh no, no. Oh, instead though, AX knows their limit, backs away, not aiming for a cheese. Yeah, there's the shield as an extra precaution, but looks like things are going to be very steady for this bot lane. Well, we're... Look at the feathers though, this is kinda... This is what I'm talking about, like if it were any other short range AD carry, they'd just eat those feathers all day, but luckily that is a Caitlyn they're running. Very smart choice there, especially Miramo is actually known for having a really scary Caitlyn back in the am back in his amateur scene days. So, on to the mid lane Lucian matchup with Team uh, Galio. Well, Light does have that wave cleared, despite uh, if Awakening can push all he wants, but... Galio has this great wave clear, which makes him farm under the turret very efficiently. Ooh, very oh, low. Oh wow, Hato almost out of life. I wonder what happened there. Gotta respect that Lulu. Gotta hate Miriam for that. No pun intended, by the way. But yeah, I mean... <laughs> Look at this though. I mean, AEX across the board really pushing it. Uh, both bot lane and mid lane respectively really want to get those trade-offs early on. But what I'm actually interested in seeing here is the jungle passing for both sides. So that being said, again, opposite side start. So we're going to be seeing very different uh, gangs. Unless, of course, they go mid. But of course, it would actually make sense that um, Kulit might, could potentially transition to top lane. But he does actually go for the recall instead. So... We'll just have to hold that off for just a little bit. We'll have to see. Sometimes I see... I don't really see what's Kulit's trademark jungler. Do you see it, Arctic? Well, that's actually a very interesting point that you brought it up. Does he have this certain champion? Well, we know certain players have that. Let's, let's say uh, to one of the <laughs> recently new ones, uh, mm. TME side, Marky. When you say Marky, you know Zaya. You, but when you, you say think that pentakill, yeah, man. when you get when you <laughs> say some people like let's say Gullit or Tamsu, do they have this uh, really distinct uh, iconic jungler? Well, for Tamsu, back in during their prime during Rampage 2016, like when I think Tamsu, it was the before Zach was reworked. But looks like we might see something happen. Oh, Tamsu gets spotted there with Light securing a first blood. Very low on health, one percent health, Ooh. clutch first blood. Tricky, tricky right tricky there, but right yeah. There. And like Awaken actually used both his Ignite and Flash for that. Well, uh, well, technically Light is running Teleport, but still, like considering you used both Summoners in that trade and still came off on the losing end, that's actually pretty big for Light right there. So going back to what I was asking Arctic, what can you say is the trademark between these two junglers? Well, for Tom too, like I, he was really known for his trades and Zach back in the day, back when these two junglers were at their prime. Well, Zach is actually back, although in its reworked form. So, yeah, there are Tamsu and Kulit spotting. <laughs> but for Kulit, it's actually a different story now that you mention it. Um, I feel like Kulit might have had his signature champion during his Mineski days. But right now, I couldn't really pin a particular champion he's known for. But then again, it could possibly be because... Um, not necessarily because he doesn't have a signature, but it shows that he has a certain level of flexibility mm. as a jungler that you couldn't really pinpoint just one juggler because he adjusts based on what IPT needs. So that's pretty a good point because no, knowing that we are on the 10 band system, but here is the replay. Yeah, there we go. So actually, Light actually gets the full onslaught oh, of skills, which wow. is why he lost it. But sometimes that's all you need. You need that full resolve to go all in. You mm -hmm. need parang you need to pull the trigger first. 
And that's what Light did. Yes, when you go all in, never back down. Even though you're gonna lose, never back down. Yes, there you go. Go big or always go home. Laban kung laban. Parang pag epic joke lang. Please no, let's not get into that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and check out top lane here man. So, very interesting. Very, if anything, Suzaku and Cannon just taking their time, trying to get straight off each other, but I got oh, it. Oh, here it comes. Whoa. The collapse onto the jungle side of IPT. Here's the back of Prom. Light, no follow up from Kulit, though, but respect that Lucian. I mean, let's see. Uh, Doran's played in two long swords. You have to respect that, or not underestimate the damage, but that was pretty close. Cool. And we're seeing that Tamsu likes to really pressure the bot lane a lot. We did mm. see that in uh, game one, and yet again in game two. There is a pattern here that I think IPT picked up already, seeing that Kulit did ma make his way toward the bot lane first too. So that is pretty much something that AEX has to watch out for. Definitely. And if you're going to look at the top lane here, I feel like AEX, Tamsu might actually need to start working on something for Cannon right here because Cannon actually getting out farmed by Suzaku, 49 to 33 right now. That's pretty big at only six past six minutes into the game so something actually like looking across the board like even for jungle even for ad carry as well like ipt has that covered not to mention they do have that one kill up so i mean yeah slowly building up ipt so ax needs to keep on their toes a bit pretty much uh slow down laning phase for all except the bot lane the aggression from hate he is really pushing that a lot but with the help of the lulu i think the csing wise for Caitlyn is not that difficult exactly and there we go actually they're back on each other's toes 56 to 54 for both any carries and um yeah i mean What's actually interesting here, I gotta commend Cannon because the last time we saw him in the top lane, although it is technically because of the meta, he was leaning towards these more utility-based champions back when he was in the top lane before eventually being succeeded by Endless Ace as of the previous split. But it's interesting now that he's able to bring champions such as Fiora to the table as opposed to before, like, I remember Cannon for using champions like Shen, even the occasional Morgana top pick, which he's actually very proficient at. So it's refreshing in a way to see that Cannon has evolved into being able to use these uh, champions that could actually carry for the team as opposed to just providing utility. Mm, and he's actually having a hard time against Zaku on that top lane cutting. And right now, we are going to be seeing uh, Light already unlock that level 6 team as Zaku. Both teleports up, not so far yet for Light. But collapse if a collapse does happen, leave it to IPT to have more members responding if they play their cards right. But Seeing how AEX is pacing their laning so far, they know that on the K-Lane, they don't want to play too dangerous. They don't gabble too much. And look at that. The harassment coming from the bot lane of AEX. Man, Mirmo. And interestingly enough, it was actually Hate that was initiating the trade. But at the end of the day, with that, it was actually him that came off on the much more painful end of the spectrum because Mirmo deals a lot of that damage and thanks to that caliber net as well was able to land that kept that extra headshot in mm. and not to and also to add to that it's also the little shield that's very ah yes. that always makes you lose your trade-offs but first blood onto light he does pick up a heavily sustaining item the dark seal and the crafty potion but Tamsu though looking for the right time he does make his way in just land the body slam Colin is there with a the turn of the hunt we can see that he goes in for Tamsu. He does file flash out of it with Vanguard very low. And that would be a resources burnt. Oh, that, AX. that would have been very dangerous, especially since Light was actually walking in for the response. Luckily, AX was able to escape by the skin of their teeth. Because otherwise, if that resulted to death, that would have been absolutely devastating for them. And if anything, like I mentioned, I, IP to actually slowly capitalizing on the small leads that they can, whether it be through CS, those small kills such as light has yeah i mean we'll just have to see again aex i feel like i like in a way i actually like aex's pacing in this game they're actually just kind of waiting for a very chill laning him face yeah because like once they hit mid game that's where i feel like they actually might have a great chance especially like he has triple threats into the phone the fiora lucian and the caitlin but one of my concerns is that if you actually don't get things going earlier on, how that actual efficiency would bode mm. against IPT's composition. Because that's actually, there's a lot of uh, people that could uh, 
stop them in their tracks, such as the cannon. Then you also have Light, who not only deals damage, it could also be a huge meat shield at the same time because of Galio's innate tankiness. Yeah, and also for Suzakusa on a cannon, really giving cannon a really hard time in the top lane. I mean, the CS difference show is kind of increasing, and it is also forcing cannon onto the turret. So the teleport place will not happen that well for them. And seeing the Keystone Masteries, he is running the fervor of battle. That's that's really hard, mm. I guess, especially for a melee champion like Fiora. And I actually like how Light is running Courage of the Colossus because clearly that's the intention. Like he wants to survive a little bit more for that disruption going into the clashes, so that um, other champions such as Saya, such as Ranger, could really dish out like really painful damage against AEX and looking at the competition that AEX has there's a lot of squishiness as, ex with the exception of Tamsu of course. I wonder why the uh, right now the 11 minutes in the game the kills has not increasing but you have to expect that Kulit he's on a Rengar I mean he does have the he does not have the element of surprise that well but I can really understand that he does not want to gang the bottom line knowing that that is a Caitlyn with a trap and a Lulu for the shield. Really, you can't go all in when there's a Lulu. Exactly. And I gotta commend Kulit at the same time, because if you're gonna look at it, the CS difference is absolutely impeccable between this Gragas oh, and Rengar wow. here. And that's gonna be the first turret for IPT, so just like that. Six, again, 50 gold. Exactly. Small victories. Very small victories with very, very tempted, because you can slowly build up on that. And that's what IPT is doing right now. Mm. And Slow and steady and not... And also their composition actually comp actually uh, works well in the mm. late phase of the game. So let's say uh, Awaken does scale up pretty well, has a lot of damage, but that Galio is there such a disruptor, a powerful disruptor. He has to knock off the hero's entrance, not to mention that Taunt. It's going to give a lot of scramble focus fire from EX. Imagine how painful a hero's entrance follow-up would be to a cannon that goes initiate with the slicing maelstrom or, or, a, or a rengar exactly like a rengar that invisib like in invisibility and then suddenly jumps in and then he follows with the hero's entrance oh here comes skirmish from the top lane we can see the cannon it does not like the harassment he got there there's a duel coming in one more crucial shots he does flash in he gets stopped and Ooh. there is the outplay from suzaku oh man going 1v1 cannon definitely needs to respect suzaku right there i mean suzaku isn't considered um uh, isn't considered one of the best top laners for no reason, and that is exactly one of the reasons right there. And that definitely. Oh helps. no, Glint. He cannot get out of here. Here comes the hero's entrance. The smite does grant him some help. Here comes a swallow pincher attack. Does not connect with Kulit picking up Tamzu. And in the bottom side, Vanguard is left alone. There is the Rasmus from Kulit. He does get exhausted. One more furry bar for the battle roar. He lives, giving Shadow a kill. Oh man, and they will they be transitioning into this Infernal Drake though. That would be in a great juicy juicy moment. Five kills now, plus an Infernal Drake. That would be absolutely, that would be the cherry on top for IPT right there. And oh, Awaken for the mid lane. Flash out from Shadow. Does not die from the Ignite. Here comes Light Flash. And Todd does connect. There's the blast call, but the burst is too much. Coming from Kulit. Yeah, it's, uh, as opposed to our previous games, we're in, it was kind of a one-sided story. Right now, it's totally IPT's fairy tale. right now. Earlier, AEX was dominating game one. They are clearly out for vengeance. Going into game two right now, IPT 6-0, not to mention uh, almost 5,000 gold lead at only 14 minutes into the game. That's pretty impressive. And Saki pushing the second turret. Yeah, the pushing power from that cannon is just too much for cannon to even fight back. If he goes in, he'll get stunned and CC locked by that cannon. And also, running a fervor of battle, Expect the pain. Let's say you do have the parry, but Cannon does have that lightning dash. He can just move out of the parry's range. Ooh. <laughs> oh, some ganks coming in. Vanguard is there with the Lulu. Zako does not have run. a flash. He does stun Vanguard here. Here comes the Grand Challenge plus the Blade of Rune King. And there's a slow from. The Ripochet. Yeah, so that was like three members. Unfortunately, Suzaku did run a little bit more faster. And as a result, IAPT will take advantage of that distraction in the top lane too. Take down this outer bot turret. Two turrets in the hand of IAPT looking pretty solid, scrambling the members of AEX. Let's go ahead and check out what happened here though. I mean, this 
Dragon oh, fight here is absolutely insane. Great hero's entrance from Light right there. It was almost demise for Kulit, but because of Light's entrance and the fact that Kamsu was within the range of that hero's entrance definitely saved his life right there. Great, great play. Mm -hmm. And also the bait with that he used to smite for a heal and the battle rod plus the empowered uh, Q really caught Kamsu by surprise, but you don't have nine lives yet, Kulit. He does have a flash though, gets Ooh. over the wall. Same with Tamsu, he catches him. Oh man, but of course, very interesting though. That was um, a lot of resources actually used for AEX, even though for that one kill. I mean, both flashes down for both Vanguard and Tamsu for that one single kill on Tukulet. Whether or not that's actually worth, I mean, sure, small consolation, but going into the bigger picture, that actually does leave them a little bit more vulnerable. Right now, we're seeing the itemization. He does have the Warriors and Shaman and the Kasabi. Two long swords and a uh, Ruby Crystal. Mm -hmm. Might go for a uh, Black Cruiser or a Demonstrate if he chooses to. But when it comes to engaging, they have Light. And Kulet, he doesn't need to build that much defensive items. He, ha he does have Light for the damage reduction. And in the top place, Suzako goes in on to Kainas. He can't fight back. He is stunned. And he goes down without even a Oh man, the confidence Suzaku has, as you expect from a top caliber, top lane player in the PGS right there. And he is just on, he's on fire at this point, clearly. Yeah. Just winning the game by pushing. AEX has zero turrets. Oh man, this is a completely different story from game one for this match. Adaptability right is something you there need you go. in the PGS team. Especially right now, we are going to be running the... More, more games, especially the best of five series, that will really test your endurance and strategy as a team. So right now, IBT coming from game one, adjusting to game two. The results are showing right now. Oh, definitely. And actually, light, light. <laughs> actually, like lights itemization right there. But hold that thought right there. I heard the rep herald being summoned. Let's see how that goes. Sneaky from the. <laughs> Red side of AX jungle. Ang cute niya maglakad actually now that I look at it. <laughs> lop, lop. It's like a but it's not cute when he barges into your house like that. So Marasma coming in and there are traps really preventing IPC from going all in. Seeing Tamsu in the front zone. In all fairness though, the Rip Herald may not have been used to max efficiency, but at least well. Never mind. <laughs> I was actually expecting maybe they'd be able to get something out of that with Suzaku actually splitting in the top. But then again, IPT does transition into this inner bot turret, so that is still fairly worth as an objective is taken down. Might not be the Rift Herald, where the lane where Rift Herald was released, but still, as long as you get objectives out of that, I'd say the distraction of Rift Herald was semi worth. And also, the map control of AX is gone. They don't even have proper visions in the objective side, not to mention also their own property. And we're seeing Suzaku really pressuring the uh, top lane of AEX. Definitely. You know, this is the tricky part when you're running a Lulu that's sort of behind right now. It doesn't. You don't really have that confidence to roam about the map because... Ooh, oh, no, it does sidestep no. from that body slam. Now it'll be a two versus one. Suzaku has enough damage to take on both of them! Suzaku is on a killing spree while Cannon is in the fountain rejuvenating him from his Ooh. death. But Tamsu can escape. Suzaku is not giving up chase. There is the wild card to bait him in. The exhaust is there. Teleport coming in. Let's see. Lightwood is going to be joining the fight. He does manage to cancel it. At the very, very last minute, with with good reason though, as he's actually will get a decent split here in the bot lane. Although Mirmo would be stopping him in his tracks for the meantime. Still though, that small casual of Suzaku doesn't really deter them from the bigger picture. IPT is still very much in the lead right now. It's very, uh, it's not that weird, but it's nice to see that the way that the early game was played off was not the junglers dictating how mm. it's supposed to be done. It's the laners like taking charge. They pushed till the first turret. And after the first turret, no rotations were made yet. So Zach will still remain in the top lane and continue this pressure. And that's how they get able to get the Mountain Drake, uh, the Infernal Drake. So this type of play style, I think, suits IPT so well. Definitely. And uh, there's a lot of trust when you're executing that type of strategy where you just allow your jungler to power farm. I think this is something a lot of ranked players in the Philippines could learn from sometimes. You don't really don't need that gank from the jungler, especially if your jungler just power farms. If you lose lane, it's not because your jungler <laughs> didn't gank you, it's because you did really bad at your lane.
So yeah, with that <laughs> said, that's going to be two Infernal Drakes for <laughs> IPT. Kind of a mini Rabadon Deathcap for them. That passive is gonna help so that's gonna have that passive is gonna help Suzaku a lot. Oh definitely. And I mean I did you see again, of course oh that Runa he actually has Runa for it. So that's actually gonna be more painful. I mean imagine earlier, like that was like two became a three V one. Now that he has his runes, he's gonna be all the more hard to take down, even when AEX is grouped up together. The threat of those stuns plus the damage output, ooh, absolutely insane. Plus the sustain coming from Blade of the Rune. And there it is, a face check done by Tamsu, pays a price. He does escape with a blast going with Colette going from the side, aiming to see Vanguard or Mermu, but instead backs away. They know their limits with Suzaku pressuring the bomb lane. Oh, yes, indeed. And yeah, look at Suzaku though. This is no care in the world. Just pushing. Like if he gets a few pokes from Awaken, it's all good. He does have the life steal. Definitely. And I, what I like about this is because Suzaku is confident in his ability to split in other lanes, and with TP up, it just allows I, the rest of IBT to. Oh, light goes in for the flash and taunt, taunting two members of AEX. Here comes the redemption. Only hits two members. Lights out position, but here comes Suzaku with the slicing Maelstorm. Light though escapes with the hero's entrance, but the ignite just takes that last health down, leaving Suzaku behind. Two down in the side of IBT. AEX comes up top. Oh man, IBT has to actually look out for those types of plays because even those very small victories it would potentially actually allow AEX to get back into this game. Although the goal difference is still marginally huge. But nonetheless, this isn't one of those scenarios where it's a full sweep just yet. There's still so much room for AX to get back into this game. It's through those small little victories that they could really build up on. Similar to what IPT was doing early game. Like, they established that the lead that they have right now because of those small victories. Same could go for AX. Small victories to get back into the game. And also, what happened in the top lane was really devastating for Cannon. I mean, just 21 minutes into the game, he just finished his Revenant's Hydra. That is a huge setback. Especially when you're a hero. At this point of the game, you might want to have your Black Clicker already completed. But seeing how he was pressured in the top lane just translates to what happened to Kaiden. He cannot be that split-pushing powerhouse. He wants to be exactly. in the in this phase of the game. Especially, like, if we're talking split-push right here, the problem is that because Suzaku is so up on items, Blade of the Ruin King plus that Rune of the Terror King, he almost goes up to Bart. If, if not anything, he actually outpushes the Fiora. Because, like, even though the Fiora... I mean, this is the trouble here with Cannon right now. It's only He only managed to complete his first item, first major item, like, just literally right now, which is the Ravenous Hydra, which is actually a good item to take, especially since, you know, he try, wants to try to manage out these waves and split push, uh, match up the split push from Suzaku in a way, but because... But then again, you can't discount the fact that Suzaku is just performing all the more better in that department because he is ahead in itemization. Mm -hmm. And also in terms of itemization, hand it to the Awaken to finish up that really nice meta item, the Black Cleaver and the Blade of Moon King. But against Zaku, he is winning the team fight. But he goes in for the flash in slicing the Maelstrom, stunning Awaken down. CC locks, always wins. And now it would be Damsu trying his luck against Zaku. Here comes the start. The life is too much and that explosive cast burst will finish him off. Yeah, it's uh one problem I actually have though is ooh actually I oh, should be trying to go for this. They're going for a sneaky barrier, can of self guard, four members onto him with Gullet leaping towards him. he gets Rot and Van with life securing a kill. The Baron did reset but knowing that two members of AX are down. Yeah, it's uh, a, a wasted flash for Vanguard right there. He's trying to save Cannon at the last moment but wasn't fast enough exactly. And Cannon did meet his demise, but yeah, still so that does stop IPT's Baron Jace. But then again, if you look at the bigger picture right here, IPT is still definitely in the game. If anything, they're actually spearheading this game right now against AEX. And wow, I mean, it's... Again, I gotta hand it to Suzaku right here. This is... One of the problems with Cannon right here, like I mentioned, we act I actually do remember him from using a lot of his utility. Um, utility champions in the top lane. So, using these carries champions is a little bit of a learning curve issue. I wouldn't say a, not not really a learning curve, but it's a true test going into the PGS to see if it'll actually translate to victories, even in lane for him. Because if that doesn't happen, then that Fiora you're not really using it. 
to its maximum efficiency. If anything, zero for zero, it's almost a detriment to AX right mm -hmm. now. And also for the in terms of Lincoln, that's pretty much a setback for both of them. But right now, Kulit aiming to see someone, but there is a control ward. Going for Tamsu, maybe? Might be Murmu, but you've seen this before. I mean, IBT as a team, they like to really pressure. Just just from the last play itself, we did, we did see that their play style, like kind of a JLC style, where he likes <laughs> to split push a lot. Just, just to show this is where they excel at. As exactly. a team, pressure the enemy, deny objectives, and win it. In terms of macro play. Definitely. Full macro indeed for IPT right here. And yeah, that's actually a great point that you brought up right here. Because IPT, they're clearly in their element right now. Because this is one of their key strengths. They're full control of the map right now. And for AX aside, if IPT is macro, what is AX? Micro, in my opinion. Would it be the micro what play? Because it turns out if AX does not get the lead they want, it takes them a long time. And giving crucial objectives their enemy team so this is a huge this is a bad, bad step up but right now Suzaku taking it like a man forcing out a Wiccan splash it's pretty much happened with that I mean he just stood <laughs> just stood there I mean what's actually interesting about that like uh for AEX right here is I feel that we're definitely we can't really peg it as the same AEX that we've been seeing in different splits. If anything, because they lost players such as Carculated, who is actually efficient at using champions even though they're off meta, that being said, they actually lose a little bit of that room for the creative compositions that they're known for using as of previous splits. So they kind of have to adjust what they're able to use based on um, their current members until such time they could actually go up to par with the same contribution that Carculated had on that team, and even Endless Ace to an extent. So, if anything, it's the only flexibility and creativity we might actually see is mostly from Cannon to an extent. Awaken, like probably the small steps of creativity. Um, so, I mean like Lucian for example, but probably not the bigger um, not the bigger picks that we've seen from Carculated, such as the Kali, such as the Katarina from the previous split. The Infernal Drake is the next drain. I mean, if IBD gets it, huge, huge, bo huge bonus. And you were talking about in terms of how teams perform, but this is the summer split. I mean, huge mm. roster changes. You have to learn the adaptability to get. But right now, a face check might cost down his life. But it still goes in. And there is the displacement from the explosive cast, forcing out his flash, and here comes Life to the rescue. Knocks up Tamsu, goes in for the top with a damage reduction, only lands up to Tamsu, and that would be a signal to fall back. Oh man, that man. was a bit tricky though. Yeah, if Kulik, if Kulik got uh, taken down there, that would be a Baron opening up for AEX. The problem though is like Tamsu is very, very tanky right now. And a lot of the focus damage, because he was on the front lane, that was technically the, the only champion that they could reach, and try and try as they might. like. It's look at the health bar of Tamsu right there. It's like he didn't even go through any fight at all. <laughs> Looking at Suzaku, really likes split pushing. I can relate to that. But the Baron is live though. I mean, he can keep playing this uh, place up because IBT is known for this. Place. So you split and kind of just can't seem to catch a break, forcing his flash out. That slow from the Blade of Rune King is huge. Not to mention that wit's end, <laughs> ammo reduction really complements cannon. <laughs> and I know, right? And I actually, actually, if you actually notice, AEX starting to ping the Baron because they did lose vision right there. So it wow. would be very Turret not to have HP. Grand challenge is onto Suzaku. He's trying to get away, but there's a slow from cannon. But here is the flash out of Suzaku. Does buy some time. Trade-offs did not happen. IPT lost one member. I actually like the pressure here that AX put into that because sure we could say that it took three members of AX to take down Suzaku, but oh then again boy. it did grant Tamsu still there's still visibility from Tamsu towards the Baron side. So like IPT couldn't really stick to that typical strategy wherein you use the split pushing champion as a distraction to take Baron. So AEX clearly knows that is a possibility. So they only committed three members, while a crucial member, Tamsu, in case IPT to go for Baron, they could still potentially go for the steal. So, really great. Um, I really like the macro idea coming from AEX right there. Oh, this might be their first turret for AEX. 
at 29 minutes of the game. Finally caught some one turret, but we can see that IPC. They're aiming for the Baron, but it's very difficult because they know that AEX, they cannot be uh, reckless around a team like AEX, knowing for that burst, especially that Fiora and Lucian. But looking at the itemization, a Hex Drinker and a Fage pretty much distributed, I think he should have picked up a Hex Drinker first instead mm -hmm. of a Ravenous Hydra. And you know what's tricky here is that the more IBT tries to force this Baron, it only allows AEX those small windows of opportunities to slowly get back into the game. Whether it be through farming up, getting their necessary items, or just through the small pickups. Because 10 and 6 right now, the gap is slowly closing. Sure, the goal difference is roughly at six to 7,000, but when you're at 30 minutes into the game, it's like that, it's not really as marginally huge um, when you're at this stage of the game. And with AEX right now building up crucial items, it actually makes them all the more potent going up against IPT. If anything, they can actually withstand IPT right now. Yeah, and also for Suzaku, he is building towards a frozen mallet. And that's a huge item setback. And right now, we can see Kulit goes in for the dive through time soon. Another knockoff from the hero entrance. A focus fire onto the attack of AEX gets melted by the members of IBT. Kind of left to just stand by there and watch while Suzaku likes to really see the fear in his movement. He likes to push that turret. So that is Tamsu Dan may open up for a Baron. And there's the Baron. They're just forced to watch. And now, kind of really pays a heavy price by challenging Suzaku at this point of the game. You'll go down. Maybe I'll take the turret with it. The Baron is very low. AEX fighting back strong. But it won't be I making securing. With the Baron, seeing Mermo right now, he's focusing his fire on the line. He takes out life. No one is touching Mermo. He does match her out of it. But look at Shadow stacking up the feathers slowly but surely. But gets taken down by Awaken. And now in the bot side, Suzaku just made his way inside their base. Oh man, that was actually very good overall play from IPT right there. AEX clearly needed to choose at that point. Where they, are we going to try to take that Baron and contest it? Or will we just stick to defending the base? Of course, they had to choose. They did actually go for that Baron. And they were able to pick out members of IPT. I'll give them that. But still, with members of IPT still having that Baron, I'll just mention Suzaku. Plus an inhibitor down. Still very tricky for them. Wow. Three. Three Infernal Drakes. Ooh. That is 24% more AP and AD. More close to like a second Ravidus death cap. But no one's really going to benefit from the AP. But the AD. Ooh, leave it to Colette, he's gonna burst a lot. Not to mention that bone tooth passive coming from that Rengar is gonna stack up really well. Oh man, and with three Infernal Drakes, I don't think Cannon could take Suzaku 1v1 at this point. It's virtually impossible. They'd, he'd have to call the cavalry to actually go up to par with that powerful Akenon, that painful Akenon actually. So, again, it's definitely all on IPT right now. Baron is on their side. Whether or not they could finish this game, that is something I'm looking forward to seeing right now. 33 minutes of the game, it's not, it's still anyone's game actually. I mean, just one inhibitor is taken down, so. And the Baron is in the hands of uh, IBT. They can try and push out the mid lane first while someone pressures the top lane, but will that work out pretty well? Let's see. Yeah, but here but is the replay. Let's go in and check out what transpired here, because like, AX actually did really good here. They were actually able to take down members of IBT right here, because after that Baron take, and with all the primary damage, almost two of the primary damage dealers of AEX, oh, it was very wow. easy for them to kind of whittle down members of IBT. They wanted to preserve that Baron at one point, so their more highly likely option was to kind of try to save the members that can recall, and to sacrifice which members had to go down. So it's like Awaken was the main focus of IBT. Mm. He deals a lot of damage and solution. I mean, wow. Uh, we lowered Dominic's onto that last Whisper passive. There it comes. Oh, no. Shadow gets caught by Thousand. Here comes the redemption. And a teleport play. Where is Sly? He's there for the crowd control. Teleport does not channel fully enough. With uh, Kano being 1-5-0, he knows his limits, but right now, Colette goes in for a dive time, so here comes the line for the rescue. He knocks up two members, that's Kano included, and there's the call. Three man counts from life, really helps Kane land those better so well, securing the kill onto Kano. And now, the pressure from Suzaku really beat it out Awaken, and now, with two members down, three members down. <laughs>
<laughs> that is a huge setback, and I don't think they can defend from this wave. The death timers are huge. The inhibitor will be taken down. Oh man, all three key carries of AX down, the tank and the support, will they be able to vent? I don't think that's even remotely possible. If anything, they could only prolong what is inevitable for AEX at this point. IPT pushing very, very hard. They may have lost Suzaku, but that Baron is still going strong for them. With only a tank and a support remaining, IPT is just ignoring them like they're just a nuisance, going straight for the next turn. The death timer is, Callum will be live in 7 seconds, will it be enough? I don't think so, that turn is gone, the Nexus is exposed, and IPT will be taking away one victory from AEX of today's map. Oh man, congratulations, ending the game strong, 1-1, one, one, both AEX and IPT. Woohoo. Wow, the game it was. I mean, the way that uh, IPT played, especially Light in the mid lane, very... Not, not passive in a way that he made the opponent scale, passive in a way that it gave other opportunities for his teammates. Mm. There you go. And, I mean, overall, finally, I was kind of worried for IPT after that game one, but clearly, they're in it to win it. They came back very, very strong, and if anything, that was a very definitive game for them. And, again, though, all these matches thus far, it's just so hard to predict who will potentially be our ultimate, like who will emerge as the top team out of, at the end of all of this, because Look everybody's clearly performing. Look at Suzaku's item, uh, all tears for a victory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Suzaku. <laughs> Oh man, and not even a single assist to his name. Like, he just flew solo throughout that entire game and too much efficiency not to mention. So, yeah. Definitely very, very good for them. Look at the wow. damage though. Wow, look at the damage dealt by Suzaku with... Ooh, just landsliding out of that. I mean, dealt more damage than the Fiora by a long shot. And that is how Cannon was really shot down in his own lane. Man, oh man, oh man. But yeah, again, of course, kudos to IPT. Clearly proving showing actually everybody why they are consistently considered one of the top teams in the pro gaming series. So, wow, what a last match it was. The rivalry is still there for the ending with a 1-2-1. One, one. Thank you so much to everyone who watched our episode for the Packers Pro Gaming Series 2017 Summer Split. We have been the Shoutcasters, I am Vulcan, and joining with me was Arctic. I hope you, we hope you enjoyed the stream and also the promos that we had for you. Stay tuned for the second day. We are still running the same promo, and you can still win yourself a Mr. Gift. See you there on day two of the Pro Gaming Series. It goes in for the Flash and Taunt, taunting two members of AEX. Here comes the Redemption, it only hits two members. Lights out position, but here comes Suzaku with the sliding Maelstorm. Lito escapes with the hero's entrance, but the Ignite just takes that last health down, leaving Suzaku behind, two down. Fighting back strong, but it won't be Ivy, he's securing with the power. Seeing Mermo right now, he's focusing his fire on the line, he takes out life. No one is touching Mermo, he does matter out of it, but look at Shadow stacking up the feathers, slowly but surely, but gets taken down by Awaken right now, and Ghost so here comes the line for the rescue he knocks up two members that is Cat included and there's the call three man count from Light really helps me Lando's better so well securing the kill up to Cannon Ooh. and now the pressure from Suzaku really beat it out Awaken and now two members down three members down <laughs> <laughs> that is a huge setback, and I don't think they can defend from this wave. The death timers are huge, the inhibitor will be taken down. Oh man, I don't think that is even remotely possible. If anything, they could only prolong what is inevitable for AEX at this point. IPT pushing very, very hard. They may have lost Suzaku, but that Baron is still going strong for them. With only a tank and a support remaining, IPT is just ignoring them like they're just a nuisance. Going straight for the next turn. The death timer is Callum will be live in seven seconds. Will it be enough? I don't think so. That turn is gone. The Nexus is exposed. IPT will be taking away one victory from AEX of the day. Congratulations. Anything strong. 1-1. One, one. Both AEX and IPT.